these are just things that you need to know as a cybersecurity professional. We're not trying to hand wave that away. We still want people to come out with recognizable, marketable skills, but we're trying to give learners a little bit more assistance in obtaining those skills. You can't, there's no get rich quick scheme here. Uh, you gotta put in the work, but something like Sec 100 lets you put it in at a pace that works for you and it lets you really accomplish something uh, in a relatively short amount of time rather than like keeping your eye on a decade year long prize. Um, if you can go in and say, hey, look, I can I can do these kind of attacks. I can do these kind of defenses. I have a broad understanding of security and technology. Um, this is going to give you the sort of the practical demonstration of your abilities. Just before we start the interview, I've got to say that this video is sponsored by Offsec. I really want to thank them for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. Also got some fantastic news for those of you who watch towards the end of the video. Some great news. I won't spoil it now, but if you watch towards the end, you'll be very glad that you did that because some of you or one of you is going to win something. Enough of that. Before I give away too much, let's cut to the interview. Hey everyone, it's David Bumble back with Jeremy. Jeremy, great to have you back on the channel. Hey, David, thanks for having me. So, Jeremy, you work for Offsec, and I believe you've got some great news. I do. We have just launched our Sec 100 course, a uh, brand new course for those entering the cybersecurity field. So, you've got to tell me, Offsec are well known for OSCP, but this is the OSCC, is that right? Yes. So, in other words, the Offsec Cyber Core is what my notes say, right? Yes, the Offsec Cyber Core Certified. So, you've got to tell me, because, I mean, Offsec are obviously well known, as I said, for OSCP. How is this different to OSCP? Yeah. So, the OSCP and PWK or PEN 200, the course that corresponds to it, uh, teaches somebody how to be a penetration tester specifically. And it isn't necessarily for somebody who is brand new to the cybersecurity space. It's for somebody who has been a seasoned veteran in system administration or in programming or in networking or some other cybersecurity role. Uh, not to say that somebody without those hats can't go into PWK, but generally that's what we see the most majority of students taking. CyberCore Sec 100 is specifically for somebody who is just entering their toes into cybersecurity as a whole. So even if you haven't been a system administrator or you haven't been a programmer, uh, you can take Sec 100 and the content will be at the right level for you. Uh, and that's that's really who it's for. So this is different as well to OSCP because it's not just offensive hacking, right? Correct. We cover uh, three main domains, and those three domains really represent the OFSEC library as a whole. So the first is attacking, and you know that's sort of OFSEC's traditional bread and butter. Yeah. The, uh, the things that we cover in SEC 100 on the attacking space um, are sort of preliminary to what you'll find in PEN 200. So in PEN 200, you'll find privilege escalation. You'll also find privilege escalation in SEC 100, but the level is brought down, the amount of handholding is brought up, and so we're really giving students a nice on-ramp into the world of pen testing. The mirror of attack is defend, and so that's the second uh, sort of domain that we cover. And uh, just like SOC 200, we cover uh, security operations. We also cover some incident response and some threat hunting and some forensics. It's really a survey of all the little defensive spaces that you could be in uh, if you choose to pursue a career in defense. And the third tranche is uh, what we call build. And build really refers to all those professionals, those heroes in the uh, tech industry who don't necessarily conceive of themselves as part of the security industry, but nonetheless are integral to the security domain. So I'm talking about people like programmers and system administrators and network administrators and cloud engineers uh, when they go to make their resume, they don't think, I'm a security professional first. But from the perspective of security, uh, they are because they're building the things that must be secure. Um, so those three domains, you can think of them kind of as a, as a triangle with connections between them all. Uh, that's really what um, the OFSEC library covers, and that's what SEC 100 covers. There are a bunch of entry-level certifications out there, and I won't you know, mention any names, but there's a well-known one that doesn't have any labs. It's just a bunch of you know questions. Sure. How is this different? Does it have labs? Is it more yeah. hands-on? Yeah, exactly. So true to OFSEC style, uh, the, the goal with uh, SEC 100 is really to give the learner as much hands-on experience as possible. Uh, there are a few modules in there that don't have uh, practical labs, but the vast majority of which do. And those that don't are because of uh, another differentiator that I'd love to talk about, David, which is many of these entry-level certifications don't give the learner a sense of why cybersecurity is so important, not just as sort of a fundamental in itself, but to the business. Many, many certs and courses don't talk about sort of 
the risk inherent to uh, allowing users to do certain things on your application and what that means for the business on the back end. And so as much as possible in SEC 100, we try to return to sort of the business fundamentals and make sure that the learner understands uh, the context in which security operates as a part of a business. Um, so those those two things, really, the, the, the business angle and the hands-on experience gives learners a, a real sense of what they would be doing as a cybersecurity professional and why they would be doing it. And then the third thing that I'll say is that even though we cover attack, defend, and build, the build and the defend are also covered in the context of understanding how the attacker operates. And so that's the third real differentiation, I would say, that that SEC 100 has uh, versus maybe some other uh, competing certifications is that we're always thinking about the mindset of the attacker, regardless of if yeah. you're learning attack-specific skills or defense skills or build skills. I like that. So, I mean, in other words, I see there's a section on networking, which is obviously one of my favorites. There's when you talk about networking or you talk about Python, which is also in here, you, the, the hat that you're wearing is cybersecurity, someone's attacking the network, someone's attacking me, right? Right. What, what can somebody do if they had access to the, to the network or thinking in terms of complexity? If you link two computers together, okay, that's a little bit of complexity. But if you link 200, now there's a lot of complexity and each point is one for the attacker to take advantage of. And realizing that attackers think in this way uh, is important because it's not just about um, making sure that things work fast or that things are productive, but also as you increase complexity in a network or a system, um, what do you expose to the end user and therefore to the attacker? That's really important. I mean, at the time of this recording, there was just a big event in the last few days, right? I mean, yes. the, <laughs> yeah, CrowdStrike, which was supposed to protect companies, is now well known for you know the biggest attack ever, and very sad to hear that. Is there is an irony there for sure? That was an example of bad code, from yeah. what I understand, that caused all of these issues. And I mean, the poor people have that have to fix this. It's it's what a night what a nightmare. But it's oh um, yeah, <laughs> they yeah. they they must have been up pulling all nighters for days at this point. Uh, this is a few days after the event. I think that's another thing that is important to emphasize is um, cybersecurity is often thought of as as safeguarding three things: confidentiality. Uh, making sure nobody can can access data, uh, integrity, making sure the data stays how it should be and that nobody can change it uh, without permission and authorization, and then availability. And yeah. um, the irony is that security is often a, um, a hindrance to availability if left unchecked. And I'm not just, I'm not just talking about CrowdStrike here, but in general, um, if you put in as many cybersecurity protocols as you possibly can and as many controls as you possibly can, you make things really difficult for the end user, you make things really difficult for the employee. And so there's a balance to be struck and SEC 100 covers you know, those three things and how to sort of think about them as a whole holistic uh, rather than maximize each one individually. I'm glad you did the business side because I mean, this whole event is an example of that, right? Like you just said, you can lock everything down so much that your users are just going to try and circumvent all your controls. So I've got to ask you a very important question, which I'm sure a lot of people are thinking about is, so in the course, they're labs, but is the yes. exam like multiple guests, as I like to say, or is it a Absolutely practical? not. Yeah, it's practical. Um, so the exam mirrors the course structure, uh, which is to say that on the attack portion of the exam, you have to hack the sheets. Uh, you're right. given a certain amount of machines, a certain amount of, of information about those machines, and you're told, go hack. Very much like the OSCP, much, let's say, I don't love the word easier, but I used the word complexity before. So less complex machines, uh, less complex yeah. scenarios. The entire exam is six hours rather than 24. Um, so some of that time, let's say a third, will be allocated to attacking certain machines and gaining access to them. On the defender scenario, you're really putting on your detective hat. Uh, you're presented with an event that has happened and you can see uh, via access to certain kind of machines what kind of event has happened, what kind of security event, and you're tasked with answering questions, but it's not multiple choice. There are very, very specific answers that we're looking for, uh, like what time did attack X happen on Y computer? Uh, so it's deterministic, it's it's objective, um, and you go find that information through your detective skills and you go put that in. Uh, and then the build scenarios require you to actually fix some code. So we give you access to uh, an application, uh, show you the code, show you how it doesn't work, and then it's up to you to fix it and make it work, make it make it secure, but also make it make sure that it continues to work and uh, not take down production, so to say. The three those three areas each have a representation of the kind of things that you would do as a professional, 
um, and therefore it's all very it's all very hands on practical. There's no there's no theory involved in the exam at all. I love that. So in other words, like hacking is like I've got Kali Linux or something, and I'm going to hack some mm-hmm. device. The fixing is. I have to go onto machines and f- discover basically what went what went wrong. Uh, per- yeah, in particular, uh, it's going to be some kind of secure code or insecure code, yep. I'm to say. Mm-hmm. So we'll give you an application. Let's say uh, it's vulnerable to SQL injection, uh, and we'll show you the source mm-hmm. code for it. We'll maybe even point out where it's where it's going wrong, and it's up to you to figure out. Okay, what do I need to? How do I change the code to make sure the application continues to work? and that the vulnerability is no longer exploited. And then I, I probably said it wrong. The defending portion is where you something happened, right? And then you've got to go and discover that, but it's all done practically. Right, right. So it's it's kind of like an incident response scenario where you, you discover that something happened and you report on what has happened. Uh, in this particular case, you're not necessarily implementing the defense. That comes later with the secure software side of things. But in this case, you're, you're, you're playing the, the detective, so to speak, uh, figuring out what happened, why it happened, where it happened, how do you know? How do you prove that it was a security event and not just some anomaly? I love that because I think when you start out, you're not always sure. I mean, red teaming, yeah, yeah. hacking is where people obviously, you know, all the, the sexy side of things are. But it, in the real world, I mean, the jobs are more on the blue team side. So this gives you a good taste of three different areas, right? From a learner's perspective, like somebody coming into the field, somebody Googling and being like, I think cybersecurity is interesting. Where, yeah. What can I do? Um, many people see the red side and are like, ooh, hacking sounds cool. But you're right. Yeah. The truth is, is that there are far more jobs on the defending side of things. Um, they're just not necessarily as marketable. Um, yeah. At least, you know, I'm, I'm certainly biased having come from the red side myself. But I think, you know, when I was looking into joining this field, the attacking sounded so much more fun than yep. defense. That sounds hard. That sounds like I need to, I need to yep. make sure I can keep an eye on every single attack. It's exhausting. And it is. And, uh, Kudos to the defenders out there. It's it's really a lot of work, um, but I think what CyberCore does, what Sec100 does, is really make uh, the full field palatable and explain why all these different things are interesting and who they're interesting for and how you get into them. Uh, so that's really what it's about. We have a section on career development as well uh, as part of the course, where uh, after you've gone through everything, so you've gone through uh, the attack, you've gone through the defend, you've gone through the build. Uh, there is a part at the start that uh, that we didn't talk about, so we should return back up at the end. Yeah. Uh, but jumping jumping all the way to the to the to the bottom of the course, you go through a model about developing your career, and uh, that model talks about resume writing and interviews and how to position yourself as a professional in the field, um, which is something that many many certifications and courses don't really cover because it's more of a theoretical, not theoretical, yeah. but, um, not a, not a labs-based model. Uh, there's nothing about that on the exam, but we want to provide that information to learners so that they can finish taking the exam and then go off and write their resume and, and talk to potential employers. It's important because, I mean, it's fun to hack. It's fun to do these things, but at the end of the day, you want a job. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so let's, let's we'll just work backwards to give everyone a sense of, of where yeah. we're at. So we ended off with, with this career development uh, we did our, our build section, we did our defend, we did our attack. Before attack is this general skills section. And the general skills section covers things that you will need to know regardless of your career choice, uh, whether that is as a penetration tester or a threat hunter or a developer. Everybody needs to know some basics. And those basics include cryptography, Linux, Windows, uh, networking, how those things link together. It's not only that these things are helpful in your job role in the sense that if you can program, it makes automating things easier. It's that programming languages themselves are objects of security. And so if you don't understand how a certain function can access another privileged part of code and what ramifications that might have, um, then you're sort of at a disadvantage. So these sort of general skills provide you with immediate practical assistance in your day-to-day but they are also things that you study as sort of objects of security uh, in themselves. That's great. I mean, something I'm sure a lot of people are asking or thinking is, is are there prerequisites for this? So do I need to go and do, because like a lot of people say, go do Network yeah. Plus or CCNA, sure. go and do um, Pentest Plus, or there's like this whole, whole track. So is this like my first cyber cert or do I need to do yeah. other stuff first? This is really the, the ground bottom uh, in terms of offsec certifications. Um, we talked about pen 200. We didn't talk about pen 100. And so if yep. you kind of want to visualize it, there's sec 100 and then pen 100 and all the other 100 level uh, learning paths that we have. And then the 200 level courses. 
And the difference between, say, SEC 100 and PEN 100, the syllabus is really similar, but the level of handholding that we're providing is is much higher for SEC 100. Um, and the reason the syllabus is simple is, uh, is is similar is simple. It's because these are just things that you need to know as a cybersecurity professional. We're not trying to hand wave that away. We still want people to come out with recognizable, marketable skills, but we're trying to give learners a little bit more assistance in obtaining those skills. This would be my first cert, um, SEC 100, uh, OSCC. And then from there, I could say, okay, I actually want to do blue teaming. And then, or I want to do coding, let's say. Sure. And then I can take a track that's coding. Is, is that correct? Exactly, exactly. So it's kind of like your choose your own adventure cert, where uh, you do it, you get a little bit of a basis and everything, and then you'll have a better sense of, oh yeah, this really works for me. I want to go pursue that. Or uh, this is really challenging, but it's really interesting. So I'm going to go try bashing my head on that part. The course material, does it have videos or was it just reading? Or was it like just, how does it, what, what is it? What's, what's the makeup? Yeah, so we've tried to create the modality that works best for the specific type of content. So there's, um, there's text as is traditional offset course, but there's a lot of videos uh, that expand on the text and provide a little bit more color, literally. And then, of course, there's the labs. And so as you go through the model, you jump from text to video to labs, depending on what happens to be best uh, for that specific subject. Obviously, offensive red teaming is, is very popular with the audience. So sure. in the offensive side, what kind of attacks are you doing? Is it against like AD? Is it against uh, websites? What kind of attacks are there? Uh, so there are one, two, three, four, five, six models in the offensive uh, realm in the offensive part of the course. We start off with process, and this is true for all the different tranches. We start off with process, understanding the why and understanding what it is that somebody in this space does. So in terms of pen testing, what it, what is a pen test? Why do we do it? What are the different steps? Um, what's the sort of relationship that you might have with a client or with your internal organization? Um, we go into information gathering and enumeration. Enumeration is just a fancy term for finding out information about the network or the machine or the system or whatever it is. Then we go into web attacks. Web attacks, I always find, are a great first object lesson because everybody's familiar with them. We all use web applications all the time. And so the idea of, oh yeah, this is an input field and I can put in my username and my password and somehow the, the web application has to authenticate me. Like Not everybody's thought about that, but we all just sort of intuitively understand that that's a thing. Uh, whereas some more um, esoteric type of systems we're just less familiar with in general um, as regular users. Um, so so web is a really good first look at like, oh yeah, here's where an attacker can start getting their hands dirty. We then talk about endpoints, attacking endpoints, and that's just another fancy term for a computer. So we've, we've graduated from a web application, sort of a user-facing uh, application, to the underlying system itself. From there, we talk about defense evasion. Now that you've learned a little bit how to hack a computer, what happens if there's sort of intentional defenses installed on that computer and what do you do about them? Uh, so things like antivirus. And um, we end off with a section on cloud, particularly offensive cloud in this case. Cloud is becoming more and more prevalent um, yep. and it's important for people getting into the field to understand that cloud isn't sort of this other technology that you know other people are going to go do. It's going to become more and more integrated with uh, the day-to-day, -day, regardless of your role. I've got to ask this. I just, once again, saw Linux Basics, Windows <laughs> Basics in the introductory section. So I'm, I, I hate to hop on this just to make the yeah. point. Prerequisite skills for this cert, is it just basic knowledge or do I have to do like anything before this? Like, do I have to learn Linux before I get you? Nope. We're going to teach you the, all the Linux Basics that you need for the course. We teach you in, in, in the course. So all I need to do is like have obviously like know how to use a computer, really basic yeah. foundational stuff, like A plus kind of knowledge. Is that, is yeah, that, is yeah. that fair? I mean, be able to turn it on, open up programs, uh, the, type on the keyboard. Um, if you have some conception of what a command line is and how it interacts with the computer and how you can interact with it, that's really good. Um, but that's that's really the bare minimum you need. I love this. So, I mean, this again is my first cyber cert from Offsec who are have, I would say, the gatekeeper or the, the, the top cert when it comes to uh, pen testing OSCP. It's the one that always comes up. So you guys have now taken it to the beginning. So you had like sort of this high end cert that was really well known, but now you're trying to do the same thing for beginners. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've had pen 200, we made yeah. pen 100, but that's really, really preparatory for pen 200. And this yeah. is sort of even more preparatory in general for everything. Topic that's always like, oh, very popular Wi-Fi hacking. Is that also here? Yes, I do, yes. 
there is one model on Wi-Fi in the uh, defensive space. So again, we talk always from the attacker's perspective, or at least we return to the attacker's perspective. But this this one is is part of defense. So how do you think about securing a, a Wi-Fi network? And what we've done here is a really cool activity. Uh, it's difficult to virtualize Wi-Fi. So yeah. what we've done is walked the learner through how they can go about um, auditing and then securing their own home Wi-Fi network. And it's, I'm glad to see yeah. you've got IoT and embedded systems. Yes, an area like cloud that is becoming more and more embedded, not to not to overuse the term, in everything else. And uh, it's very important that even if you're not going to go really, really hands-on, you get an understanding of what are people talking about when they say embedded systems or OT. I love this. So in other words, very wide range of topics, very exactly. broad, but like uh, inch deep type thing, right? It's not whereas like when you go to OCP, it's very much deep, deep on pen, um, on hacking. Yeah, I, I would say an inch deep in certain subjects, um, maybe three inches in others. Uh, there's certainly yeah. there's certainly areas that we're focusing a little bit more on in terms of those hands-on activities sure. because we want that certification at the end to be practical. Um, so things like attacking endpoints, things like um, uh, incident response basics, uh, these are things that we're going a little bit deeper on, but then there are certain modules that, yeah, we're covering, hey, this is a technology you need to know about. Here's how it relates to the business. Here's how it relates to attack, defend, and build. Most important question, I think, always is at the end of this, am I ready to get a job in cyber? Depends on what job. Uh, you're not You're not likely to go and get a job as a penetration tester, but yeah. a junior level SOC analyst, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's important, to, it's important to highlight that because there's too much stuff out there where they say, take this course and you'll earn this crazy amount of money and be a pen tester the next of week. Of course, of course. Yeah. The economic, and, I mean, economically, that's... it just doesn't it doesn't work that way. If, if you can give somebody a two-week course and then they go get a six-figure salary, like everybody would do it. So can't Yeah, this can't is reality. Happen. There was that, that book from, was it Peter Norvig many, 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 many years ago that wrote like, learn C in 10 years, uh, which I think really emphasizes like, you can't, there's no get rich quick scheme here. Uh, you got to put in the work, but- Something like Sec 100 lets you put it in at a pace that works for you, and it lets you really accomplish something uh, in a relatively short amount of time, rather than like keeping your eye on a decade, year long prize. Another thing people forget is you don't know what you don't know. I always like yeah. to say that you are highlighting my weaknesses when I take this and showing me like, okay, perhaps I'm I'm strong on Wi-Fi hacking as an example, but I'm very weak on some other type or some other sphere in 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 in, in this list of you know topics. Okay, so the exam is six hours. Hands-on. Yes. Um, I completed in one go, right? Mm. Or one sitting. Yeah, 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 for sure. And is it, how does how does the evaluation work? Do you guys like grade it and then I just get a, a, a like an automated email or something telling me that I've passed? Yeah, because there's, there's no report required for this exam. So you okay. go and, let's say in the attack case, you go and attack the machine. So get some kind of proof that shows that you attack the machine. You put it into the exam system. And you'll know right away if you got it or not. Not all the questions are like that, or not all the not all the inputs are like that. So you don't necessarily know if you got the answer correct. But at the end of the exam, you say, "Okay, I'm done," and off you go, and it'll tell you, "Okay, you passed or you failed, or what it is." Let's say I I'm doing the offensive side, the attack side, mm -hmm. and then I I'm I'm further along in the exam. Can yeah. I go back to the attack side if I remember something, or is it like yeah, the close yeah, of a yeah, section yeah. you? Move? No, no, you can go go between the the. So the way that the exam works is you get access to all the questions, all the challenges, and you have your six hours and you can use that time however you wish. You can go in whatever order you wish. Uh, it is a proctored exam, so it's proctored by OFSEC. However, you can take breaks. You can say, I'm going to work for one hour and then take a three-hour break. That works for you and you can get it all done. I'll power it to you. So when you say it's proctored, is that, that means someone's watching what you're doing, monitoring what you're doing. Is that is that what you mean? Yeah, just like all other OFSEC exams. No, no report writing at the end. So as soon as I click submit, uh, I think I've done. I get, I can, I can get my result. Right. So a question that often comes up with certs like this: uh, Is it a lifetime, or does it expire? Because you know, I could have done this twenty years ago, let's say in theory, and I, I've forgotten everything. Yeah. So the OSCC does expire after three years. Jeremy, this is going to come up a lot from a lot of people. I think. Do I have to buy like prep exams, or you know, if I go and take the exam and I fail, is that the end of it, or do is there like something that allows me to take the exam again? Yeah. The nice thing is that. Two exam attempts are included with with the purchase. So you could try it once, fail, and then after some cool off period, you go again and, and try it again. Let's say I fail today or well, life happens, stuff gets in the way, right? Is there like a period of time, like what's the limit for me to, you know, take the exam? So I purchased today. Is yep. it like do I have to do it in three months or is it like twelve months or something? Yeah, you'll you'll have to look on the website to get the official answer, but as of my current 
understanding and recollection, it's 12 months from the time of purchase. How do you say there's no better mock exam than to actually then go do the exam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, sure. Because you might feel, okay, I'm ready, but then you're not. And that's a good way to test if you're ready. And then and get rid of, just get rid of those nerves, you know? Yeah, exactly. We're all uh, conditioned from, from years at school to fear exams and think that we're being judged. Uh, but the truth is, exam is just another way to test yourself. Jeremy, what kind of roles could I expect? Like, let's say I get the cert. You've already highlighted that I'm, I mustn't expect to become like a full-time pen tester necessarily. I might be lucky yeah. to get that role. But um, what sort of the job roles that this is aimed for? Yeah, really any junior level role. Um, if you can go in and say, hey, look, I can I can do these kind of attacks. I can do these kind of defenses. I have a broad understanding of security and technology. Um, this is going to give you the sort of the practical demonstration of your abilities. Um, are you going to be a senior network engineer? No, but can you go to uh, you know, a network engineering position and say, hey, listen, this is what I know. Can you use my skill set? Yeah, absolutely. It's interesting that you mentioned network engineer because I didn't expect that to be in the list. I saw other like um, like roles as junior penetration tester, wow. which, I would, which I would expect, SOC analysts, IT security specialists, security consultant. Interesting to see network engineer there. But I think it's become important, right? You can't do, you can't be an IT today without having this focus on, on cyber security. On security. And that kind of goes back to what I was saying at the start, which is, yeah. I don't think network engineers, you tell me, David, you know better than me. I don't think network engineers conceive of themselves or think of themselves as a security professional. Yeah. And so I'm not uh, saying that, you know, SEC 100 teaches uh, the basics of, of routers and switches and how to connect things together. That's not what it's about. But it's offering a layer of skill and understanding that I think most network engineers at the junior level aren't going to have. Uh, so you might be able to go there and say, hey, listen, I still need to learn about switches, but what I can tell you is this, this, and this. I love that though, because I mean, obviously because of my background, I mean, if I did CCNA, I'm going to get good routing and switching knowledge, good networking knowledge, but it doesn't have a big emphasis on cyber security. It just has like a little bit on, on security. And right. this is, you know, it's great if I got CCNA, plus I combine it with this, I mean, then I would be a really in-demand network engineer, I think. Exactly. And it's the same with um, with programming, right? We're not, yeah. we are yeah. covering Python basics, PowerShell basics, but our goal with that is not to teach you how to be a programmer. Our yep. goal with that is to teach you the, the bare minimum you need to know to understand why programming is part of security in the first place, and then skills that you'll need to fix code. Um, but you have to go learn programming if you want to actually go be a developer. But I love that as well because, like, let's say I'm I, I was at uni, and I did some coding course. It's it's well known that a lot of these coding courses don't teach proper security or good exactly. security practices, right? So this gives me something really good to add to my coding skills. Exactly. Okay, it's all the rage these days, Jeremy. AI. Is there any AI in this? AI is all there is these days, and yes, there is. Uh, very good. very sort of survey level coverage. Uh, what is AI, what is an LLM, what's a GPT, all these terms that have come up in the past, let's say, year. Um, we yeah. do a module on that because we think it's important that people understand how this interfaces with security. Um, just like cloud or programming or networking, AI is both an object of security. You can study in the sense of how do you make something like this secure and also an enabler for security. How do you use it to uh, be better at your security job, whatever that happens to be? Um, and so we... we cover a little bit of both. We talk about both. Uh, it's not an AI course. It's not, it's not you know, solely focused on AI, but we do uh, cover it in that one module because we think it's important for learners to have some grounding in as they start to explore their other cyber skills. I love that because I just interviewed someone recently where they were talking about how AI, AI is exactly as you've said there. You know, a, a lot of AI implementations are really badly done. Sure. You know, encryption, et cetera, et cetera. And also AI is being used dramatically more and more for hacking. There, there was a report that came out recently from Mandy and Tiferical. They were talking about use cases of AI and specifically AI and offensive operations and phishing is uh, the number one use case for, for AI uh, because you can you can think about it, um, getting ChatGPT to write you a thousand phishing emails tailored to a thousand different individuals, that's something that that kind of uh, system is really good at. It's starting to be used also for sort of vulnerability discovery and vulnerability exploitation, but by far the human element uh, is the one that it can most easily exploit because it's a language model. So I was just reading through sort of the documentation. The, in, in the course, you mentioned labs. So I've got lots of practical hands-on labs, correct? Yes. There's there's videos, there's text that I can read, there quizzes, stuff like that, right? 
yeah, so there's the the quizzes, so to speak, or questions and answers. Um, we, we've tried to have less of them than we have in some other content uh, because we really want to emphasize the hands-on component. But there yeah. are certain modules, certain areas where there's just no, there's no way to virtualize a lab and there's no yeah. lab to talk about, uh, say, processes, right? Um, yeah. So we do have some questions and answers, but um, they're strategically placed so that they reinforce the learning. They're not meant to be sort of the, the objective of the learning. I think that's so much better than other certs out there. I know, again, I won't mention names, where it's just reading and you're just asking these multiple choice questions that right. have, it feels like, have no real world implementation. This is really yeah. hands-on. I love that. I think the real answer depends on the learner. There are a lot of people who will say, okay, I know that I have all this text content and I have this video content, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the lab, I'm going to go try it, and that's where I'm going to spend my time and I'm going to fiddle around with it until I get it. If I need to use the text, maybe I'll go back and, and give it a read. Um, but for some learners, it's going to be 95% of what they do because uh, they just, they're just they just kind of learning through doing rather than reading or watching video. Yeah, but I love that. I mean, different different options for different people. Exactly. Some people prefer watching videos. Some just prefer hands-on. I think most of us prefer hands-on, especially if it's yeah. hacking, right? I mean, there's no better way to do it than to do it. People do have this sort of idea of themselves that, oh, I'm a visual learner or I'm an audio learner or yeah. whatever it is. Um, it seems like that has that kind of theory has been debunked. People do learn in all these different ways. And it's about finding the modality that works for the specific information that's being purveyed, uh, which is what we've tried to do. We've tried to match the whether it's text or lab or video, depending on the kind of thing that is attempted to be taught. Big question, obviously, is always going to come up, the price. Yes, it is, if I believe, $8.99. Uh, you have to check online to get the the formal prices. Uh, don't quote me here, uh, but I think it's $8.99 for a year of access. And just for everyone watching, got some great news for you. Really want to thank Offsec for doing this. They have given me a special link, which you can use below, which will give you $100 off the cost of the course and the exams. So I really want to thank them for doing that. And also, one of you are going to be able to win a free spot. So use the link below. Uh, you can use that to enter, and one of you will win the course for free. So again, thanks to Offsec for doing that, and thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Jeremy, really want to thank you You know, for coming on and sharing great again. It's great to have you back on the channel. Got to get you back again for something else. Absolutely. But have you got any final words before we wrap up? We're, uh, we're really excited to um, have have all these learners and this one lucky learner that gets uh, gets your, your your voucher. That's that's awesome. Uh, looking forward to hearing your feedback. And uh, David, if you have a chance to go through it yourself, uh, we'd love to hear from you as well. Yeah, I'd love that. So we'll we'll talk offline. Be great to go through it and you know talk yep. more about it in, in future videos. Jeremy, again, thanks so much for sharing and all the best. All right, David, thank you. 